In case y'all somehow didn't know this about me, I love type safety. I'm a convert. I came from Ruby and Elixir land where type safety wasn't really a thing. Thankfully, at least Elixir is coming around to type safety, but we're not here to talk about adding type safety to languages. We're here to talk about adding it to packages. I'll be honest, even a lot of the libraries that are written in TypeScript aren't all that type safe once you start consuming them. I wanted to showcase a couple of the libraries I've been using for projects lately, how they weren't as type safe as I hoped, and the things I am doing to make it easier to interface with those in our applications. I think this video will be useful to anybody who works in a code base that consumes external dependencies, especially if those dependencies aren't type safe and you're trying to raise the bar. The goal here is kind of to TRPCify things that aren't like that initially. I firmly believe once you set these things up, it will make contributing to a code base significantly easier, even if some of the boilerplate to hook it up isn't the most intuitive stuff. So without further ado, recently I've been using PostHog for my projects. It's a pretty cool analytics tool that works well in the JavaScript ecosystem. They have quality next bindings, works on server and client. It's a little jank to set up, but I've been happy with it overall. They are not paying me, although, hey PostHog, my DMs are open. Regardless, it's been cool to use, but their type safety story is null or undefined. It does not exist. So let's take a look at how you're supposed to use PostHog, and then we'll take a slightly tangential path to show how I use it differently. If we take a look at some examples, posthog.capture. In this, you pass a string to, which is the, the name for this event should be a unique key that's unique to the specific event. I do really like that they do proper sentence named events. Funny enough, we actually got an email from a segment as a marketing ploy, making fun of how we name events, saying that they should be formal with like underscores and things and none of this like proper name description stuff. I personally think user signed up is a much better event name than underscore sign up, underscore user, underscore main page or whatever the hell people do there. I like naming things readably. Well, let's look at actually sending an event with properties. Here is the plan purchased. This event has a price, has a plan ID, frequency, and has features. But what if I call this event somewhere else and I don't include these fields? Or God forbid, I make price a string instead of a number accidentally. That's gonna make consuming these analytics in their dashboard significantly harder. If we don't have consistency with the actual shape of the events that we're calling. And if you wanna call this event in multiple places, which a lot of time you're gonna need to do, this model doesn't work great. So how can we fix this? Because they didn't do it for us. Well, thankfully, since TypeScript is a programming language with composition, we can compose our new alternative wrapper around PostHog's client and make something way more type safe. So I'm going to show you guys the code we're actually using in the upload thing infrastructure to do this just right. One important detail to know about how we're using PostHog is that we don't really have client side events because everything happens on the server. Like you create an app and that happens on the server. You upload a file that happens on the server. So we're mostly using it server side, but there's no reason these patterns wouldn't also work for the client side stuff. It's just how we design things. First, I define the client, which I just call new PostHog with their PostHog key. This creates our client. I then make this flush events function. This is just for cleaning up things that are queued to be sent before the Lambda dies. Don't worry too much about that. What we're here for is the type safety. Here I have a bunch of valid server events that I've defined. And yeah, I'm breaking my rule with the naming here where I'm doing proper like JSON keys. But this could have just been a string that was upload failed. It would work exactly the same either way. Here I have a bunch of events that have the same properties going in. They all have user ID, optional org, and app ID. So for all of these events, we use those props. But for other events, the thing might be different. Like if an upload failed, we have a reason. And rather than hard code all those reasons, we just make it a string. We have the location, which is where did this upload fail, server or client. Also file created in DB, which has file info, which has a file size, optional, number, as well as the file type, which is a string. We log these things so we can run analytics on our service. And if these shapes weren't to be honored in the events that we're getting, it would suddenly become much harder for us to rely on the analytics and event data that we're getting. So how do I make sure that we're actually getting this info when we call PostHog? Well, we don't call PostHog directly. We actually call PostHog through log server event. This is a custom function I made and exported that wraps the client, which I named internal client, so people are less likely to touch it. And we capture the event, which is type T. We'll, we'll go there in a second. And then whatever values you passed here. This helper means we can call log server event wherever and have real type safety. So for an example, here are all of the different events that are valid events. And if I pick one, we're going to type error because I'm missing fields that this needs. And we can see here all the fields that are missing that it needs. And it will all autocomplete and do what we expect because we We've defined this already in our type definitions. So how do I actually get this working? Well, first we have this one giant parent type, the valid server events. We wanted to break these out more, we even could. So if I wanted to take this, for example, I could do type trpc events, throw this in here, and then do trpc events and, and now I've broken this out. If for some reason I wanted to do that, I actually don't care though. So I'm just gonna leave these in line. You define your events, you define your inputs, and then we write a kind of annoying generic. 
If you think this one's bad though, it gets worse for the ingest example. So this is, we're just getting started. So here we have T, which honestly, I very rarely name things T. So I'm gonna change this to T event key. Change that accordingly here and here, because what T is, is a key for a specific event. So it's something like S3 event response, S3 event received, et cetera. This is a generic, but we don't actually pass the generic. Most of the time I use generics, they're not so that we pass things to them as a user, it's so they can be inferred because this generic for T event key is also the first argument for the function, which means we can infer from all of the valid server events that this has to be one of these server events. And when that is true, we've now set T event key to whatever this event is. So S3 event receive, file to complete, whatever those are, whichever you picked. And now the properties for the payload has to be the value for that key because valid server events T event key is how we determine the input. This makes it relatively easy to make a big type like this, pass one of the keys and get back the valid values that this can take in. If you've used TRPC before, this is relatively similar where we have what effectively is a big object with all of the things we can theoretically do. And then we have a type mapping that identifies what inputs are necessary to do the specific thing that you choose. This pattern makes using your events and consuming things significantly easier. If we look through our code base, we can find some examples where here I have list files called. When somebody calls our API endpoint to list files, we want to see how many files they have when they do that, because we want to make sure that our endpoints aren't being obnoxious to work with so that we can add pagination when we need to. So this lets us know very simply how many files are in an app when someone calls this endpoint so we can log and see the trends and how many files exist in apps. This is very handy for us and response that length is a number. But if I was to go to this list files called definition here and change this from number to string, we'll immediately get a type error here because file count is a number, not a string. This makes it very easy for us to guarantee consistency in our events. So when we actually consume these things in our logs, life is much easier. But this was the easy example. I think this will serve well for the majority of users, and I sincerely hope y'all can get something from it. But I want to show something a little bit more advanced. I want to show something that I'll be honest, has been a little painful for me to work with, but once I got it working, it was really good. I want to talk about using this for event queues and inputs as well as outputs. So what does that look like? This one I haven't set up in a code base yet but I do have this working example. So let's take a quick look. The service we're talking about now is one called Ingest. Again, not a sponsor yet, but I think that will change in the future. Hell, it might even change by the time this video is out, in which case I'll be sure to put a disclaimer here so that you know that. Regardless, I'm really hyped on Ingest. It's made managing my events and jobs in my next apps significantly easier. It's been a really pleasant experience to use it, minus the type safety. I'm genuinely really disappointed in the type safety that they're providing. Thankfully, they get it. They're working hard on it. In fact, they're looking at a lot of the stuff that I've been building to make better type safety. But in the interim, I wanna show you guys what that looks like. Here they have their event type definition that looks kind of like what we were doing before, and they pass this into ingest as a schema. It's actually a decent bit better than it was when I checked it a few days ago, but I do think we can do better. In particular, since these events can come from various sources, I want to be able to validate them. And I also am tired of having to redefine names of things all over the place. Like when I create an ingest function, I have to give it a name, then I have to give it an event, which is kind of a name, but it's meant to be a unique identifier separate from name. And then finally, we write our function, which might not even know what it's inferring and what types it does and doesn't have access to. I think it's smart enough to grab events from here so that it knows once you've established that. I think we can do significantly better. So let's take a look at what I have proposed to ingest to give you a good idea of what chaos you can engage with once you go too deep. So before we go into the pseudo library code, I wanna just show the example user code. Here, I create an ingest router. This ingest router has a key, some function, which is an ingest function. Name is now optional with my overrides. So we can drop that if we don't want a separate name and we just want to have some func be the, the name, so to speak. It has an input, which is a Zod validator, which means this can throw if the input isn't valid and give you errors and feedback and theoretically show up in a UI somewhere. You can also add their config, which is for things like rate limits, retry logic, crons, and whatnot. Very handy. Where things get interesting is the input here, because I can infer off of the Zod validator what is and isn't valid for the input. So I change this from user ID to user name. We'll immediately get a type error because the input is user ID, not user name. And when you call this other places, like if I change this back to user name, we'll see we get type errors down here too, because we're not expecting user ID, we're expecting username. So we're able to define this in one place. And when we change it, we'll type error in all of the places consuming both 
calling the ingest function as well as doing the actual work in the ingest function here. On both sides, we now have this validation layer that is both type safe at compile time and also validates so it's safe at runtime too, even if you accidentally call the wrong thing from, let's say, an external service. This is so easy to work with, but it wasn't as easy to set up. This took a lot of inspiration from TRPC and some type finagling that I've learned from my time working with TRPC, helping read way too much of their source code and do reviews, but more importantly, the work that we've done for upload thing recently. So huge shout out to Julius, Mark, and everyone for helping me get good enough at TypeScript to do this. So without further ado, let's go to the chaos. <laughs> Oh boy. The first thing, obviously, is we import Zod. Zod is a very important library for these types of things because it has really good validation and also really good type inference. I create a JSON Zod custom type, which is important because I don't want to allow keys that aren't valid in Zod. Because if you call something with a date time and it comes out as a string, that's a really bad experience. And since these things are able to be called via JSON with post, we need to make sure all of the inputs are validated with JSON. So knowing that JSON Zod is the key value here for a safe Zod object object. Input is my helper name for the actual input for one of these custom ingest functions. It takes an optional name, it takes input, which is the inferred generic here, and then config, which for now I'm just mapping to any because I don't want to grab the types from ingest, but obviously this can be typed however you choose. And I made my custom definition for the ingest function. Obviously, this would actually call ingest here instead of just returning i, but this made it easier for me to test with and do examples. I'm also using a return type, which you all know aren't my favorite thing, but it makes it much easier to do inference on both sides here. So ignore that. Trust me, this makes life much easier. And then we have the router, which just returns itself because it's a helper function. Obviously, this would actually do work if we were hooking it up to ingest, but this is meant to be an example. The structure here is pretty simple once you understand all of the weird syntax, though. Step one is we define what's allowed. Step two is we define the shape of an input. Step three is we define how we consume that input. Step four, we define the shape of all of the functions we've created. And then I make this fake ingest package that exposes both of these things. Then I have the build client helper, which is an internal function just to alias some types. This one was a mess and took me a while to get right. To break it down, we have the router, which is the object that has all of your functions in it. And we have a key, which is one of the keys within that function. I take in the router. I make this separate because I want to be able to infer just the router without having to infer an individual key as well. And one of the annoying parts of TypeScript generics is if you specify one of the keys, you have to specify all of the keys. So in order to specify T key, so again, in order to access one of these keys, like to access some func, I need the whole router. But if I want the values off of this, I'd have to pass both as generics, which is really bad DX to have to rewrite the same string like three times. Imagine if in order to call this, I had to call like const c equals build client, and I have to pass type of ingest router, and I have to pass it one of the valid keys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I made this just the one key. But if I was, ah, fuck it. Good luck to my editor. Sorry. Okay. The fuck? So with build client helper, which is the internal function, I can't just pass the ingest router. I can't even pass nothing. So then it will infer everything incorrectly because it doesn't have that second key to work with. The solution here is make an externally facing function that takes just that one generic and then have this call another internal thing that gets me that key of type here. So I'm guaranteeing that the arguments called from the resulting thing has to be a key of this. Because again, if we have more than one generic key and we pass one of them, we lose all of the others and it type errors unless we manually pass all of them, which does not work for what we're trying to do here. So this build client is a very light wrap around build client helper, which is basically the same thing, except it has two keys instead. So I can infer key of T router here, which means build client helper now has all of the context it needs, both for the router with all your functions, as well as an individual key for the functions that you want access to. And while this is all a bit of chaos, and I'm sure there will be people in the comments cleaning up some of the disaster that this is, I'll leave the link for this playground in the description so people can fix it. It does work and it works really well. Because now, as a result, I can define a router using ingest.router, which takes a bunch of key values where the value is an ingest function. And now I can infer types off of it. If you call something that isn't a real function, it won't work. If you call something that is a real function but without the right input values, it will error. And if you do everything happy, works as expected. Obviously, I would love for them to support this as part of ingest itself and to not have to expose these things as wrappers in our own code bases. But I'm choosing to because it makes our developer experience significantly better. And the ability to move with confidence and make big changes to things like our event system and event handlers for jobs that are running for days, if not weeks, knowing that every input and output is valid and correct is a massive, massive win. I think there's a lot of great software that hasn't become type safe yet for any of 
many reasons. And that shouldn't stop us from using it, but it shouldn't stop us from being type safe either. And with solutions like this that contain the type safety, you end up with a really good experience overall. And you might think that other libraries that have this built in are somehow safer inherently, they aren't. A lot of things like TRPC are full of any's in the internal code base, but they do that because for them, TypeScript isn't a solution to make sure everything internally is perfect. TypeScript is how it's meant to be consumed by the developers using it. And as long as the TypeScript experience when you're using the code is perfect, reliable, and if it doesn't red squiggly, it's going to work, then TypeScript is doing its job. I don't think you should go do this for all of your internal code. I think you should do this for external dependencies that aren't type safe, that you want to have a better developer experience and a more reliable time shipping with. We will certainly be using this for all of our dependencies that aren't type safe going forward. I think it's important for us to have our autocomplete behave and trust the red squigglies. Are you interested in building your own type safe wrappers for the things that you use? Have you done stuff like this already? And did you see dumb mistakes that I made in this code that are just aggravating you endlessly that you want to fix? Regardless of which of those is the case, leave a comment below because those help us out a ton and helps me understand what is and isn't resonating here so I can make better videos and give better advice going forward. If you want to hear more about how people use TypeScript wrong, in particular with type safe inference, I'll pin a video in the corner here all about why inference and TypeScript as a whole are often misused and how to use them a little bit better. Appreciate y'all as always. Thank you for watching this one. This was very fun and huge shout out to both Post Hog and Ingest for letting me roast them a little publicly. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.